So you've created a post-apocalyptic desert environment. You've also modeled a kick-ass robot scorpion that roams this desert. All you need now is to add some rust to the metal scorpion and make it blend into the environment. Well then, you've come to the right place. Using shader nodes, you can set up a single procedural shader that generates different variations of rust. And to make things more interesting, with the help of geometry nodes, this procedural rust texture also reacts to other close-by objects. So fire up Blender and open your model. You can use Eevee with a relatively low sample count and get amazing results with fast render times. Now, create a new material for your model and name it Rusted Metal. Then head over to the shading viewport. You don't need most of the parameters of Blender's principal BSD of shader node, so delete it. Then, using the Add menu and the search field, find Blender's Glossy node and add it to the shader. Use the color input of this node to set the base color of the rusted metal. In this case, let's go for copper as the material. To generate the first layer of rust on this copper object, let's add a texture coordinate node, a mapping node, a noise texture node, a map range node, and a bump node. Later, we'll be using the scale values of the mapping node to create different variations of the rust texture, but for now, keep it at its default values. The noise texture node produces the most prominent layer of roughness for the procedural rust. Make sure to increase the detail as well as the roughness value of this node. The map range node remaps the input value it takes from the noise texture node. As a side note, you can potentially use a color ramp node instead of the map range node to achieve a similar result. Finally, enable the invert option on the bump node. At this point, you can already start to see the rust effect appearing from this procedural shader. Now to make the non-rusted part of the material look more realistic, let's add some smaller bumps to this procedural shader. So again, using the add menu and the search field, Bring in another noise texture node and another bump node. Set the detail and roughness of the noise texture to their maximum values. And don't forget to select invert on the bump node and decrease the strength value. These two nodes produce a very dense but subtle distribution of bumps on the non-rusted part of the metal and make the procedural texture look more realistic. Now to bring some color to this rusted metal, add a color ramp node. Here, you can simply drag the color input of the glossy node onto the color ramp node. Then add a new color tab and select an intermediate color. This intermediate color will be the most prominent color of the rust material. The final color tab, the one all the way to the right, will be the color of the innermost regions of the procedural rust. And with that, you now have a procedural shader that can generate a variety of rust textures using the parameters of these nodes. Easy enough, you can already use this in your models, but to make things more interesting, we're going to make this procedural rust texture react to close by objects. To give this procedural shader this reactive property, let's head over to the Geometry Nodes viewport. Every mesh is made up of many vertices, and one way to use Geometry Nodes is to assign additional information to the vertices of a mesh. As you can see here, right now, each vertex only holds information about its coordinates, but by the end of this setup, we will have an additional column that contains information about the distance of each vertex to a secondary object. So first, add a subdivision modifier. This will give your model enough vertices to articulate the visual effect with enough fidelity. Then, add a geometry node modifier. This will automatically add a group input and a group output node to the graph. Now, using the add menu and the search field, bring in an object info node, a position node, and a geometry proximity node. 
The object info node provides information about the secondary object. Make sure to change the option from original to relative so that the proximity values update as the secondary object is moved around. The position node provides information about the coordinates of the main object, and the geometry proximity node is where the distance between the main and the secondary object is calculated. Notice that when you plug in the distance output of the geometry proximity node to the group output node, a new output named distance is generated. However, before you can actually use this distance output, you need to give it a name on the modifier stack. I can't overemphasize how important this step is, so please don't forget to do it. The moment you finish typing the name of this output, a new column is generated for each vertex containing its current values. At the moment, they are all zero since we have not yet selected the target of the object info node. So create a secondary object with any shape you like. I'm using this mesh, which is made up of an extruded circle and an incomplete cylinder. Now, select the secondary object through the input field of the object info node, and that concludes the geometry node setup. We can now use the output of this geometry node setup from the shader node. So let's head back to the shading viewport. To use the output generated by the geometry nodes, add an attribute node, a math node, a map range node, and another math node. On the attribute node, make sure to use the factor output and select the name of the output you generated in the geometry nodes. This will let you use the distance value that is calculated by the geometry nodes. On the first math node, set the operation to power with an exponent of 0.5. The map range node remaps the distance value to a more usable range. On the second math node, set the operation to multiply add. This math node combines the original rust texture with the distance attribute. However, as you can see, the result is not that great. That's because the distance attribute is too clean and produces a flat surface. You can easily fix this by adding some noise to the distance value. To do this, add a noise texture node and a mix RGB node. For this noise texture, I suggest using a scale higher than those used on the other noise texture nodes. On the Mix RGB node, select the Linear Light option. Unlike the normal mix option, the Linear Light option doesn't shift the distance attribute and ends up giving better looking results. Together, these two nodes distort the distance values given by the attribute node making this new layer of rust blend in with the original layer. As I mentioned before, this procedural rust texture reacts to the movement of the secondary object we selected in the geometry node setup. Let me also point out these particular nodes and their parameters. Changing these will generate a variety of rust textures, making this procedural shader extremely versatile and very useful. If you want to learn more about procedural textures, shaders, and materials, consider watching my other videos. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.